Well, Morena, my dear, goodness gracious. Writing down that one as well. I have a special place in my heart for those situations. Sure do. Sure do. Okay, guys. Well, good morning. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> we are going to hop into our study. Okay, so I, for those of you who are not here before our prayer, um, we are going to try out another tool today, but this is one that I really, truly, I won't go, for those of you who already heard my spiel, I won't dive, you know, nose deep into all the details again right now, but man, I love this resource so far. We're going to use it, so our study may feel a little different, but that's not a bad thing. Um, and I really, really would like honest feedback, um, to tell me how you guys like this format that we're going to try. We're going to try it all week long. We're going to at, at least this week. Okay. Cause I want to really give it a really honest try and, and just remember that it takes time to get into a new habit. But I think that this tool will really, really add a lot of um, amazing structure and guidance through our study that doesn't take away from the study itself and doesn't take away from what God has lined up for us, but adds to it. Okay, so that's the intention here. Um, oh, man. Tell you what, though, guys. Alex asked me if I did something to my eyelashes, and I tell you what, I'm not used to, like, the... I think my, my eyelashes are rubbing on my glasses. <laughs> Anyway, sorry. Um, gosh, I was, oh my gosh, I feel like today I'm just feeling like extra awkward. You know what I mean? You ever have one of those days where you're just like extra weird? I feel like today is one of those days. I'm just like extra weird today. Okay, we are going to read Proverbs chapter three, okay? Um, it's a great day to feel extra weird as we go into the topic of discipline. Oh, discipline. Ah, ugh. it's funny. I have to say this. My child has been not really listening into the studies like the last week or two. She's been off playing, doing her thing. That's cool. I let her choose, right? Today, she specifically asked me if she could stop, if she could, if she could watch and listen today. Um, and I was like, of course you can, right? But I think that it's funny that she felt like coming back into it, <coughs> child listening, um, on our topic of discipline. She's going to love it so much. <laughs> oh, she's probably rolling her eyes at me right now. I can't see her where I'm at. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Anyway, sorry. All right, guys. So bear with me as we go through this. Uh, new tool. It's going to be a weird adjustment for me. It's going to be a weird adjustment for you. But part of what's going to be really cool about this is it will help us with more discussion points as well. So prepare to get uncomfortable and prepare to listen when God tells you to speak up. Okay? Okay. Um. <laughs> oh, man. You guys crack me up. All right. Okay, so here's our main point today. Wisdom is attained through the knowledge of God and the love of his word. Okay. <gasps> oh my gosh. So for those of you note takers, which I highly recommend you do today. In fact, I really, really think as we try this, this is the week to start taking notes if you haven't been. Oh my goodness, what is up with my hiccups today? <gasps> I'm like, <sighs> okay. So wisdom is attained through the knowledge of God and the love of his word. 
So that's kind of our like central point, main point today, okay? All right. So again, I know this is gonna feel kind of weird. Um, typically we just jump right into the reading and then we kind of discuss as it feels natural. Um, but today we're gonna start with a couple of kind of questions here to kind of get the conversation rolling, okay? Um, what are some examples of life situations we face that aren't moral choices? Okay, so what are some examples of life situations we face that aren't moral choices? Examples are um, like decisions about love, marriage, family, career, leisure, etc. Anybody have any examples? aren't moral choices. I'm kind of curious. Let's, for those of you who are like, I don't really understand this question. That's totally okay. I want to just give you like the dictionary definition of moral. Okay. We're going to break it down real simple here. Dictionary definition verbatim. Concerned with the principles of right and wrong behavior and the goodness or badness of human character, okay? And then the second definition is holding or manifesting high principles for proper conduct. So basically, breaking it down, what are some life situations that don't have to do with good or bad, being right or wrong, right? breakfast <laughs> I love that <laughs> that's perfect that's perfect um I'll add to that uh, am I gonna have my coffee today what kind of workout routine should I do um let's see let's get real weird like what are some weird ones what are some weird decisions that we can make that have nothing to do with being right or wrong hmm Am I going to drive to the store or am I going to walk to the store or am I going to bike to the store? Am I going to um, get a job that is work from home or am I going to get a job that is go to the office, right? Like it's not a moral choice, right? And there's a difference. I think that that's a good actually one thing that really kind of sticks out is there's a difference between something being right or wrong for you and for your circumstances, for your situation, right? And being morally right and wrong, right? See what I mean? Does that make sense? Anybody else have any fun examples or not so fun examples? <laughs> Am I going to get dressed and like not stay in my pajamas all day or am I going to stay in my pajamas all day? I tell you what, I'll be completely honest. If I wasn't in front of a camera practically every day, I probably would just stay in my pajamas a lot more often. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> okay. Why is wisdom important when we face decisions like these? Ooh, why is wisdom important when we're making decisions that aren't moral choices? Dang. Why is wisdom important when we face decisions like these? Again, I think that that kind of goes toward it. It's the non-moral choices really need to reflect what is right for your circumstances, your situation, maybe your family, right? It's not necessarily, um, you know, a good or evil kind of thing. It's just, you know, okay, what's, you know, what's best for, for me or my family or my situation right now? Right. So knowing like having wisdom about, you know, appropriate responses to a circumstance is definitely helpful. Like like you said, breakfast. OK, if you woke up feeling, you know, yuck, you're probably going to make different choices about your breakfast than if you woke up feeling like fantastic. Right. 
or if I wake up feeling like super chipper and I'm good, like I may, I may skip the coffee, but I, if I wake up dragging my feet, I'll probably have two or three cups of coffee. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like super, you know, low key examples. But, but again, those are not moral decisions. Does that make sense? I know, I know we're starting out really weird. I feel like we're losing people already. That's okay. <laughs> All right. Next next thing. Feel free to keep chiming in. Um, other than from God and his word, what are some places people might look for wisdom on how to face the situations mentioned? Um, well, like, if it references, like, food, meals, things like that, probably just hitting up a recipe book or internet. <laughs> I look up recipes online all the time. Like I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to be like, all right, I'm going to, you know, I need a recipe for some super bomb oatmeal and I'm going to look for that in the Bible. You know what I mean? Like that. It's not, the Bible is not necessarily for those kinds of wisdom. You know what I mean? Other people? What do you mean? Oh, other people as in you, you go to other people for wisdom? I got you. Sorry. Boop. Derp. Um, so, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's really important to acknowledge because we each have different experiences. We each have different bits of wisdom and knowledge, right? And we each have different perspectives. So going to other people is really important. Um, for things like this, especially that are not moral issues. Um, you can ask, like, you know, I ask my significant other all the time. Um, well, maybe not all the time because I don't really care that much. But, <laughs> you know, does, um, do I match? Or, you know, does my hair look okay? You know, like, things like that. This, you know, it's not a moral issue, but. Getting somebody else's input is valuable. Or does this taste okay? Like, do you like this? Okay. Um, the book of Proverbs deals with many of life's basic concerns. The book stresses the value of wisdom and the benefits we gain from following wisdom. Although the world offers many answers to our quest for wisdom, our first stop should always be to consider God and the wisdom in his word, all of life to be submitted to God's direction. So, absolutely. You know, there is a lot of practical wisdom in, um, like, practical stuff in scripture. You know, obviously we're not going to get the super nitty gritty, like, like I said, like looking up a recipe, like you're not going to get a recipe. It's not a recipe book for like food. It's a recipe book for life. It's not a recipe book for food. Right. You know what I mean? But, but at the same time, I love that it, you know, we, we need to be making sure that we are, um, checking in with scripture, checking in with God and every choice, every decision whether it's a moral situation or or just a simple you know basic life situation right all all life circumstances are appropriate to bring to god everything should be brought to god again though god will provide wisdom through resources right like we're not i'm not going to find an oatmeal you know a bomb oatmeal recipe or something in in scripture, but I can say, okay, like this is, you know, God tells me to take care of my body and, you know, be healthy and everything. And so I'm going to seek out resources for, you know, healthy recipes and, and workout routines. And I'm going to, you know, take advantage of these other resources, you know, yoga, who should, you know, what yoga should I do? Well, I'm not going to find a yoga practice in scripture, but I can bring it to God and ask God to guide me to the right resources and the right wisdom and the right information, right? Does that make sense? Okay. So we're going to jump into Proverbs. We're going to read a little bit here. Oh my gosh. Discord's blowing up. So 
little little note here. All of life's situations should be brought to God. Not just the moral decisions. Okay. All right. So we're going to start working through some of these verses here. Okay. So we're in Proverbs chapter three. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands for length of days and long life and peace. They will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Okay. So there's our first little bit here. What are the commands given to the young man in these verses? And what is the promised result of each of those commands? Okay. So the commands are... Do not forget my law. Okay. Do not forget God's law. Um, <clears throat> keep the commandments. So, like, follow them. Keep, fo like, remember and follow the, the commandments. Okay, um, let's see. And then let, oh, what's happening? Oh, <laughs> uh, hello there. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for following. That is a very interesting name you've got going on there. We are uh, we are diving through Proverbs chapter 3 right now. And in verses 1 through 4, we're pointing out what are the commands that, um, that God is giving right now. Uh, the next one is, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet, tablet of your heart. Um, so that's basically like... Um, Hang on, hang on to mercy and truth. Remember to be, you know, be honest, be merciful. Where it says like bind them around your neck, write them on a tab the tablet of your heart. That's basically like engrave them in you. Like always be truthful, right? Okay, and then what are the benefits? So the benefits that are stated are uh, the length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. So um, peace, that's basically peace and long life or like prosperity, right? And then, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. So find favor with God and people. Clearly not all people, but that's part of life, right? It's part of being a Christian. Okay, so what are the, what are the commands that we get out of these passages? Um, do not forget God's law. Keep, meaning remember and follow his commandments. Be truthful and merciful. Um, and then what do you, what are, what's promised from that? Peace and long life, prosperity, and find favor with God and people. Okay. Um, verse 1 through 4 teach that wisdom is attained through the mastery of God's word. Okay. Wisdom is attained through the mastery of God's word. 
Oops. <laughs> okay. Um, scripture is the center of all we do as the body of Christ, and it is the book by which we live in the Christian life. The Bible is from God, reveals God, and teaches truth. Only through the study and application of God's word do we learn how to live for God and share his love with the world. Okay. That's absolutely accurate. So, you know, we're talking about discipline and this is basically, a, you know, this is a great reminder that we need to be disciplined in the word. We need to be disciplined in in scripture. We we have to be in scripture and absorbing it, learning it, um, keeping it in our heart, keeping it fresh in our mind and applying it to our life. Right. We need to be disciplined in the word of God. Does this um, say anything to you guys additional? Again, I know this is kind of a, a different different setup than we normally do. We're kind of going a little slower pace. All right, and then we're going to read. Let me know if you guys have anything additional. I'm going to hit up. We've got another verse here. I'm going to share in the chat. Okay. Um, all right. So it's with um, 2 Timothy verses 3, or I mean chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly, firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how... From childhood, you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching. The reproof of correction and for training is righteousness, that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. Again, we must be disciplined in the word. Um, I love I love that first bit of this passage. Um Continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, right? You know that the teaching is from God, so stand firm in that. Continue to do what you've learned from God. Apply it to your life. Apply what God has taught you. Okay. If you guys have any other verses that you'd like to share, please feel free. That was 2 Timothy 3, 14 through 17. Okay. Um, what words emphasize the importance of studying scripture in this passage? What words emphasize the importance of studying scripture? So continue in what you have learned and firmly believed. Um, able to make you wise for salvation through faith. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. And I love, man, this whole passage is just like, boom. Um, that, and then, uh, the man of God may be con uh, competent, equipped for every good work. So be diligent, be disciplined in the word. Oh, Johnny. Thanks so much for that. <laughs> we are, what is my cat doing? Cat's being crazy. Thank you so much for that, Johnny. Oh my gosh. Um, if you did not hear, we are trying out a new tool today, and this is the first day, so I'm, I 
apologize if it's a little wonked. Um, okay, so so which which words here? So so when we are disciplined in the word, we are more competent in God's instructions for us. We are more competent and better equipped for his work, right? And then in what areas of your life does scripture prove profitable and how? So are there any areas that that you have noticed in particular that scripture has proved to be profitable for you? Um, remembering scripture, uh, holding on to that and being knowledgeable about scripture. Are there areas that you have or situations that you have faced that, that it was helpful for you to... Um, to know to be competent in the scriptures, any any area of scripture, right? Are there anybody want to chime in and give me an give me an example? And then so keep pondering that. And then have you noticed a change in these areas when you haven't been actively consuming God's word? Man, I tell you, I think one of the biggest reasons why I've been seeking out um, more tools for our study time is so that um, all of us can benefit from diving even deeper into the word and being, you know, better trained, more competent, um, seeking deeper wisdom um, so that we can apply it better and be better equipped. And I think that when I steer away from tools that can help us grow deeper and d dive deeper, um, I feel like maybe I kind of drift a little bit and we tend to get just more distracted. It gets a little, gets a little crazy, but, but by seeking ways to really dive in better and utilize the tools that God gives us, I feel like we're, we're a lot better. We're, it's a lot more profitable. It's a, it's a lot more valuable, um, in our time together when we're more disciplined and, and utilizing more study tools for our time together, right? But then on the other hand, the second question was, have you noticed a change in these areas when you haven't been actively consuming God's word? Well, I mean, we're always consuming God's word, but when we're adding on, when we're not adding in, um, like maybe I don't use a study Bible or I don't use another resource, well, then we're just going off of read scripture and, and, just simply talking about it and not absorbing more um, more context and more resources that God has provided for us to use. And, and maybe we're missing out on something. And I constantly feel like, man, I feel like maybe we could have added more to this study if, if we dove a little bit deeper into some additional resources. Like God's word alone is obviously enough. Like I don't ever want to discount that, but there's there's a reason why we're called to not just read it, but also study it, right? And there's so many study resources to help us and to guide us and to, to provide um, some more insight and perspective and, and, and knowledge and wisdom and, and everything in that. So diligently studying and utilizing the tools that God's given you is super, super valuable and helps me and hopefully helps you guys in this time as well to be better equipped to to feel more competent in the word right so good glad somebody agrees <laughs> okay um okay and what does scripture equip us to do and how does this work? So, great example here is that scripture equips us to be, um, it, it teaches us, right? <laughs> scripture teaches us, it corrects us, it trains us in how to be what God calls us to be. How to live the way that God calls us to live. How to live more like Christ, right? And then again, scripture helps when we um, really embed ourselves in scripture, we are more competent and we are better equipped for every good work, just like it says in Second Timothy here, right? 
So what does scripture equip us to do and how does this work? Spend lots of time studying God's word, be in God's word constantly, and you will absolutely and seek to study and understand it, right? Um, and you will absolutely be better equipped to tackle all the, the crazy storms of life, right? I think explaining uh, that we're in a new, I got you, that we're in a new covenant to people, knowing scriptures that address this throughout the epistles is essential for that. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's, again, another reason why studying the word is so important. And, um, you know, I feel like there's, Maybe it's a weird point to bring up, but I feel like there, there's so many so many times that I hear, oh, you know, you don't need study tools. You don't need a study Bible. You don't need, you know, um, outside, you know, resources. The Bible alone is enough. And it's like the Bible alone is enough. But when you're studying, it is really, really helpful to have study tools that, that God has provided for us to to dive even deeper into his word, right? And so far, I'm loving that this kind of, like, it's asking questions that kind of prompt us to dive a little bit deeper and really think about it, right? Um, and that's really important. And, of course, whenever you're choosing a study resource, you want to be praying over that, lift that up to God, and, and seek his input on that and make sure that it is provided from him and not um, a false teaching of some kind, right? So, anyway. But yes, absolutely, absolutely. That's an, absolutely another reason why studying is so important so that you can um, learn the differences between, like, learn the differences and the relevance um, of the Old Testament and the New Testament and everything that, that goes around that train, right? Absolutely. Okay. Then we see here, it says, the Bible is a guide that teaches us how to grow in our faith and how to live as disciples. David called it a lamp to my feet and a light to my path in Psalm 119, 105. It's profitable to teach, so it's profitable to learn from. Ooh, I love that point. It's profitable to teach. If it's profitable for us to teach it, then it's also profitable for us to learn from. That's That's kind of a... That's a, that's a, that's a, like a mind mental trick thing. Like you really gotta, you really gotta think about that. If you, if you know that it's good to teach people from the word and teach people the word, right? Then you should remember that it's also valuable for you to be learning from, right? Because we don't know everything. None of us knows all of it. We don't know everything. There's constantly more for us to be learning always. For the rest of our life, there's more to learn, right? We should we can be teaching what we what wisdom we have gained from God, but also learning more every single day. Um, rebuking and correcting. Oh, perfect! I'll read that in just a second. Rebuking and correcting also make it useful for preventing. There's no need to be rebuked or corrected if you never did something in the first place. Rebuking and correcting also make it useful for preventing. Oh, I got you. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> oh, my gosh. Time is flying, guys. Hold on. Let me turn off alarms. Ooh. It is prayer time, guys. All right. So, for those of you who are hanging out, at 9-11 every morning, we stop and pray for our nation and our world, and we're going to do that now, okay? So if you guys will pray with me, that would be wonderful. Dear Lord, thank you so much, God, for giving us wisdom, for guiding us, for helping us, and Lord, I just pray that you continue to feed us and fuel us and help us to be more like you and less like ourselves. Um... Lord, I just, I seek, I seek change for all of us. Help us to be transformed and made new again with you every single day. Help us to strive and yearn to be more like you, to serve you in all the ways that, that you call us to. Help us to 
love each other the way that you love us. <laughs> oh my goodness. And help us, Lord, to... Oh, man. To go through these crazy times that we're in, focused on you even better. Lord, I just... I ask that you forgive us for any and all wrongs that we have done. Help us help us to see where we have where we have been wrong and help us to have a heart of repentance and seek out your correction and help us to to seek you out in your word and in prayer and just seek you out more and more every single day. God, just be with us as we continue to try to figure out everything that's going on in our world right now. Help us to not be afraid. Help us to not be <laughs> angry to the point of sinning. Help us to guard our mouths, our minds, our hearts. And help us to just keep focused on you and not on the turmoil of the world right now. Help us to do our part, though. Help us, whatever it is that you call on us to do, Lord... Make it known to us and give us the courage to do it. Without question, help us to have the heart to tell you, just here I am, send me, no matter what the cost, no matter what the calling. Help us to just go out and tackle whatever it is that you have in store for us. God, I just seek you out to please just come and intervene, change our hearts, soften the hearts of people around the world, and help us to strive to make this world a better place and not be ripping each other apart. God, I just thank you so much for everything that you do for us, everything that we have, all the guidance, all the teachings, all the corrections, everything that you do for us and everything that you provide. Lord, just help us to have our eyes wide open and our hearts wide open to you and soften to you and help us to see what you want us to, to do what tools we should be using, where we need to go and do your work. How are we called to serve you in this crazy time of, of our lives, of our world? And help us to just always have a heart after you. Lord, I just thank you for this community. I thank you for everything that we do and everything that we have. And help us as we continue in our study this morning to just really truly hear more from you. And I just thank you so much for everybody who's here, everybody who comes in and out, and whatever is in store today. Lord, thank you so much for all of it. In your name, amen. Yoshi! Hello! You're a good dude. Um, oh my goodness. Let me just kill all this stuff really quick. My Discord is like blowing up today. Um... <laughs> Let's see, Hebrews 5, 11, 14. Johnny shared, Concerning him, we have much to say, and it is hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing, for through, or sorry, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you have need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food, for everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness, for he is an infant. But solid food is for the mature who, because of practice, have their senses. Let's see. Let's see if we can get the rest of that verse. Oh, <laughs> I like how it took my typo. Solid food is, f uh, what? What did I just do? Oh, but solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Love that. Thank you for sharing that. I know I kind of missed a little chunk there in the middle somewhere, but... Absolutely, um, I, I man, I think that's such a that's such a great image. Absolutely, of like we're not we're not even when we have a lot that we can teach, we still have a lot we should be learning, and we need to make sure that we are going back to um, 
the 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 milk of knowledge right like we need to go back to the basics and refresh our souls on that refresh our knowledge refresh refresh ourselves in the word constantly even the basic stuff because we need that we need those reminders i mean there's so many things that are just basic principles of christian living right but we so often digress from those you know not intentionally but it, it's easy to do. We live in a very broken world, and it's very, very easy to drift away from what we're supposed to be doing in any area, right? And we need those reminders to be corrected and brought back to the Word. Go back to the Word and spend time in the Word every day so that we can be refreshed, be renewed, and and be restored through His Word and through His instruction again. We need those reminders. We absolutely need those reminders. Thank you for sharing that passage. Absolutely. Okay. Um, oh my gosh. Excuse me, so sorry. So we just read that. We read 2 Timothy, so I'm in chapter 3 there. And then, um, and then it goes on to say here, the Bible, when actively consumed, provides us all. Oh! <laughs> Thanks for that follow. Welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. We are um, going through a, some structured study here in Proverbs chapter 3. So we're reading some notes here. Um, the Bible, when actively consumed, provides us all we need to mature in our faith. <laughs> Excuse me. A process that God designed to happen in the community <laughs> of his church. Oh my gosh, these hiccups today. Let me read that one more time. Let's try to get through that without a hiccup. The Bible, when actively consumed, provides all we need to mature in our faith, a process that God designed to happen in the community of his church. I love that because um, I super, super love that because it's such a good reminder that we really are called to do this together, right? We really, really are called to do this together. So when we spend time learning and growing together it's it's even better and there's there's more discipline there there's more accountability there but there's also a lot a, a better pool of wisdom there right um interesting first choice of words there friend um so then it goes on, committing ourselves to the discipline of study is a sure step toward attaining wisdom. And the second command from these verses in verse uh, three through four, the writer instructed his son to pursue love and faithfulness with the result of being a good, with the result being good reputation with God and man. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Just highlighting that. Okay. Let's knock that off now, please. <laughs> Thanks, Yoshi. All right. Um... Yes, absolutely. So committing ourselves to the discipline of study is a sure step toward attaining wisdom. So when you commit to studying scripture and actually like really, really diving in, then you are on a sure path to attaining wisdom from God, right? The wisdom that we need for our life, right? For all kinds of situations in life. <clears throat> all right. What are, why are love and faithfulness important? Great question for our study. Um, why are love and faithfulness important? So in verse, let's see. Let me pop this up here. Three. Three and four. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. 
Write them on the tablet of your heart so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Okay. <sighs> All right. You know, I don't ban people often, and I sure don't do it lightly, but that's just kind of obnoxious. <laughs> Thanks, Yoshi. I got that one. Give people a few tries, but if you're just going to come in here and spam a bunch of hate, goodbye. Um, where were we? Why are love and faithfulness important? Great question for the moment as well. You know, it, man, God is love. <laughs> we are called to love each other, even when people mess up, even when people do the wrong thing, right? Even, even our enemies, right? We are called to love. And that is so important because when you love people the way that God loves you, you are absolutely bearing the fruit of the spirit and you are, you are sharing that with the world around you, right? Great example. When trolls come in, I'm not going to sit here and be all <laughs> freaking out. You know, we don't have to, we don't have to respond to situations with negativity and hostility right even if it's happening towards you it doesn't help to be unloving in re in return right what are the top two biblical definitions you know for love patience and kindness patience and kindness go a long way go a long way you know what i mean so why are love and faithfulness so important the heck just happened hang on now i just accidentally yoshi i think you beat me to it and i just banned my <laughs> i just banned my bot <laughs> oh that's funny guys that's so funny oh well i'll fix it later so for now i guess we're, we've got a bot banned on accident <sighs> goodness, you know, patience and kindness goes a long way. And faithfulness, why is faithfulness so important? Being, <laughs> I know, man. I'm surprised, who was it that caught it before I did, man? Oh, let's see, can I unban it from here? Ah. Oh, no, it was totally Yoshi. What the heck? How did I... That's weird. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to let that take up distractions. <laughs> oh, man, guys! This is... That's funny. Let me just tell you. Love and faithfulness. That is such a freaking ironic point for this to be blowing up in our time right now. I think that it's absolutely hilarious. Um, it's so important, guys, to just remember love according to God's terms, right? God's definition of love is just so important. So important. It goes a long way. You can let things make you angry. You can let things tear you down. You can let things discourage you. Or you can just... Just trust God and just give it to God. God is in control and God is love. And when we have faith in God and we trust him and his guidance, his wisdom, his provisions, and we, we have faith that he will provide and he will bless us and he will, he will absolutely keep his promises to us, there's so much power in that. There's so much power in that. And that absolutely will help you through every storm of your life. If you cling to God's love and your faith for him and his ability to provide, right? Set that up as an object lesson. Contact 
you set that up as an object lesson. I'm not quite sure what you mean. <laughs> oh. <laughs> autocorrect. I know it's an autocorrect. Lovely. That's so funny. And Yoshi, by the way, I'm going to leave it to you if uh, something comes up again. That's so funny. have to figure out how to unban my bot. <laughs> Do that later. That's so freaking funny. Oh my gosh. Anyway, so love and faithfulness. Why are they so important? Guys, I would love to hear what you guys have to say about that. Why are love and faithfulness so important? Um, again, the verse it's referring to is let, um, well, in the, let's pull this up again here. Oh man, I'm sorry. I'm just like, does the, um, I wonder if when you ban somebody, Yoshi, maybe you'll know when you ban somebody, does that take their follow away from the channel? Cause that would be really funny if it didn't like they're just following and following and then spamming, but then they're like, they're giving a follower count, which is just cracking me up. But I think it takes it away. I just think it's hilarious. Um, was supposed to be, come on, you set that up as an object late. Oh, <laughs> man, I so did not, but that was such perfect timing, wasn't it? I love that. I love that whenever I, I swear, man, whenever we talk about, um, things that are super relevant to trolls, I feel like they just, they come in and it's just like, man, God, you're totally testing me here and you're proving the relevance of this right? Like, that's totally, totally how it seems to work. It's so funny. It may, I think that was added recently that those got removed. Yeah, I think it went back down, but it's, it doesn't matter. I'm not worried about the numbers. I just thought it would be funny if, like, somebody comes in, follows to troll, and then they're really, like, kind of blessing the account because they're giving a follow count. Like, I just think that's really funny. <laughs> but I don't think it does anymore. I think you're right. That's so funny. Guys, grace goes a long way. Love goes a long way. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you, right? Being negative, being hostile, being mean, uh, reciprocating the trolling, like, that does no good, right? You can, you can just, man, just don't even let it bother you because God is in control and, and you know what? They were in here, and any troll that comes in here, they come in, and for any length of time that they're here, there's potential for them to hear the word of God and to receive patience and love and kindness, regardless of how they're behaving, right? And that's the same for anybody in our lives. If they are condemning you, if they are, you know, if they are being cruel to you, um, just, just, be, just be kind back. Just be kind back. Because uh, where is it in scripture? Um, all, the trolls will eventually, all the trolls will eventually find out. Yes, they will. It's, it's like when you, when, you are, when you speak words of kindness in response to hate and cruelty, right? Uh, it's like burning hot coals on their, on their head. Like, you know what? It's so frustrating to them that they're not getting the response that they want. Don't give them the response that they expect, which is to to get people all shaken up or upset or hot and, and mad and angry, right? Don't give them that response. That's what they're looking for, right? They want to be able to point the finger and be like, see, you know, Christians are hateful and they're not nice people and, you know, they're no different than everybody else. It's like, no, you know what? We are different because I'm not going to respond to that with negativity, like, everybody's welcome here to come in and hang out, you know? Exactly. We should be praying for them. Absolutely, we should be praying for them. In fact, you know what? We'll go ahead and stop and pray for them right now for a second. Lots of prayer today. Look at that. I want to pray. Pray for the trolls with me, guys. Pray for the trolls with me. Dear Lord, thank you, God, for giving us a perfect example of exactly what we are 
<laughs> talking about and learning today. Thank you for your timing. And thank you for your sense of humor. But also thank you so much for giving us wisdom and for helping us to understand that we should be responding to these situations with love and grace and kindness and mercy and faith. And Lord, help us to continue to respond as such. Lord, be with these people that uh, are filled with such hate and contempt for you. And Lord, I just, I just pray that you plant seeds in their heart that maybe in their time trolling Christian streamer channels that, that they or wherever that they, that they receive seeds planted for you and that those seeds grow and that they have their hearts softened towards you and, and that their, their hearts are changed, that their ways are changed and that they learn to respect you and seek you and enter into a relationship with you. I pray that through trolls coming into our channel that that they all may have an opportunity to hear the truth about you maybe for the first time. But Lord, I just pray that that their hearts be softened and that their ways be changed and that if there's a part that we can play um, that, that you give us the wisdom to do that, the courage to do that, and, and the peace to do that. And Lord, just continue to, to bless our time, no matter what happens, no matter how many trolls come in, and help us to really just seek you out in all that we're doing, and uh, be a light for these people that come in so broken that they feel the need to be disrespectful and be unkind Lord, and help us all to just have a heart of immediate forgiveness for those who come in and persecute you and persecute us and are cruel and unkind. And, and Lord, help us to also not take that to heart. And just remember that these are people that are hurting and broken. They do not know you yet. And Lord, I just pray that they may know you. That you may not push them aside or cast them away or turn your back to them, but that you may forgive them and uh, pull them closer to you. Lord, just thank you for an opportunity to shine some light in this platform, in this world, in this way. Thank you so much, God, for helping us to learn more about you and your truth and your wisdom. And continue, please, God, to just fill us up with wisdom and grace and love and faithfulness and kindness and patience. God, thank you so much for all you do in your name. Amen. Yes, guys, pray for the trolls and expect them. Expect them. I'm never surprised, never surprised by trolls, ever. We're on Twitch, for goodness sakes. <laughs> we're on Twitch. Of course, we're going to get a bunch of trolls. And I mean, look at my title. Have you guys noticed my title today? Oh, man, I put that up knowing. Knowing. <laughs> My title is Do Not Despise the Lord's Discipline or Be Weary of His Reproof. That just, like, screams trolls come at me, right? Like, that's okay. That's totally okay. Um, and again, I don't ban people lightly, but if you're going to come in and you're just going to spam a bunch of hate and be, you know, and not stop, well, then, unfortunately, I have to ban you. Anyway, we're going to move on. Okay, so. Uh, but hey, like you said, seeds are being planted. Exactly. And that's exactly, exactly the point. Make sure that your conduct is appropriate for seed planting, not ripping out a potential root that maybe is already there. Know what I mean? Know what I mean? All right. So let's see here. We're going to read the next section here. Okay. We're going to pick up at verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Oh, one of my absolute favorite parts of scripture. Dude. What are three items, uh, what three items did the author of Proverbs uh, 3, 5, and 6 suggest would improve a person's relationship with God? 
Uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge him. Right? Trust in the Lord. Oops. I just wonky underlined. Trust in the Lord. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh, what happened? <laughs> what the heck happened? Oh, that's funny, Yoshi. You unbanned it and then you timed it out. <laughs> um, okay, sorry. Man, we're getting super distracted now, aren't we? All right. Um, so what three items did the author of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 suggests would improve a person's relationship with God. So to to improve, to help improve your relationship with God, trust him. Don't lean on your own understanding. But in all that you do, oh, you're good, dude. In all that you do, in all of your ways, acknowledge God, right? <laughs> That's not when you feel like it. That's not only in the big stuff. That's not only in the small stuff. That's in all your ways, acknowledge him. All your ways. Everything. Every situation. Right? What would be the result if believers committed themselves to this type of living? He shall direct your path. When you give it all to God, he will direct your path. Point blank. What does it look like to trust in the Lord with all your heart? Ooh, input time. What does it look like to trust in the Lord with all your heart? And why is this so challenging for us to do? I would love to see what you guys have to say on that. What does it look like to trust in the Lord with all your heart? I think for me, it's absolutely... When God calls me to do something, I answer. I think I think Isaiah 6, 8 just really like... Man, I, oh, that's just like the perfect example. When you trust in the Lord with all your heart, no matter what God needs, no matter what God wants, no matter what God calls for you to do, you have the immediate response. No matter what it is, no matter if you know what it is or not, here I am, send me. With a willing heart. You have a willing heart to just obey God and just trust that his guidance is never going to fail you, Right? Trusting in him through trials when our faith is being tested. Absolutely. That's a great example. I love yesterday. Um, the sermon yesterday was, um, there's a part of it that really, really hit me. It was in Psalm 37. And we were talking about um, the potter and the clay, right? And, he was talking about how in Psalm 37, um, it's talking about trusting God, committing to God in a way that is, you know, being carefree. Like, you know the, that that God is going to catch you. You know that God is there. You know that God is good. You know that you can trust him. And you're not living in, like, walking on eggshells kind of way. But you are living a free, full life in the Lord, right? And it's and it's kind of like a carefree kind of way. Not carefree as in, I'm just going to do whatever I want, but like carefree as in, like, I'm going to do, you know, whatever God tells me to do, and I'm just going to enjoy it, and it's going to be, you know, I'm, I'm just going to trust him, right? And you're just not worried about, you know, if you can trust God or what's going to happen next, right? And that was really a cool example. I'd never really thought about it like that, but how often do we just, like, we're living, like, oh man, like, man, I need to be so careful. And, you know, oh, did I get that right? And, you know, oh man, like, how do I fix that? And we're just, you know, is God going to catch me in this? Like, oh man, am I seeking God in that? And we're just, you know, and it's just like, oh my gosh, I just can't slow down. How often do we do that to ourselves? And we're just constantly worrying and obsessing, right? Hello, hello. Notice I'm like, wary of all new followers at this moment <laughs> no i'm just <laughs> what were we just talking about <laughs> not being not being afraid hello winkari how are you <laughs> no i'm totally teasing you just you came in after we had a 
multiple troll experience. It's all good. Just like, be one of them? <laughs> no. Um, welcome, welcome. We're talking about Proverbs chapter 3. <laughs> ah, through Aki. Love it, love it. Well, thanks for joining us. Yeah, I totally recognize your name. I've seen you over there. Just completely just teasing. I know that you're not one of them. I've seen you there. <laughs> oh, man. Um, no, but welcome. We're talking about Proverbs chapter 3 right now. Um, and we were just discussing... What were we just discussing? <laughs> Sorry, my brain. Oh, my goodness. Um, what does it look like to trust the Lord with all your heart? Ooh. Nice. Well, hey, it'll be real fresh for you then. That's literally what we're talking about. Um, and man, what a beautiful point for you to jump in. Um, so as it relates to verse 5, in fact, um, what does it look like to trust in the Lord with all your heart? And why is it so challenging for us to do? So I just, just opened it up for you know some input from you guys. So if you have some input to share, I would love to hear. Um, and I was just saying, you know, it's, man... What does it look like to trust in the Lord with all your heart? That absolutely is when we can just, we just know that we can trust him and we, and we live in a way that we're not afraid of what's to come. We're not worrying about being provided for. We're not worrying. We're, we're not worrying, right? We're just, we're, we're just living life, seeking after God and doing the best to, you know, do what he calls us to do when he calls us to do it. And we're just giving our life to him. But that is challenging. Um, that, is, that is so challenging because we live in a very broken world. And we are not naturally inclined to be submissive and obedient, right? Like, that's not what we're naturally inclined to do, just point blank. We are kind of more naturally defiant more naturally disobedient we naturally want to do our own thing and we don't want to be told what to do you know what I mean so it's hard it's hard to do what God wants us to do and especially hard to just trust the Lord with all our heart and not question him and not wonder if that's the right thing right so if y'all have input on that please feel free to share I love everybody's everybody seems to know each other a little bit um, so yeah, if you guys have input, please, please, please share. And then what are some specific areas of your life in which it is easy to trust God and in which it is harder? Ooh, man. What are some specific areas of your life in which it is easy to trust God? I don't know. I feel like as I grow in my faith, it's become a lot easier to just naturally trust God in most things. I think the tough things are like, <laughs> the tough things are when something has to change. When life changes or you are required to change, <laughs> that's when it's harder. Because changing is hard and changing is often painful, right? Love again to see what you guys have to think. Don't let me moving on to the next questions discourage you from uh, answering. It's weird. I trust him easy with big things like job loss and pregnancy delays. But when it's little stuff that I think I can control, I have a hard time. Oh, yeah, that's a really good, that's a really good point. And Morena here says, easy to trust with daily safety and such. You know, I think it's funny. It's actually become a lot easier for me to trust God with this coronavirus crap. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's become a lot easier for me to just, just trust him. Like, I just, I feel like a few months ago, I just kind of, I stopped worrying and I just kind of gave it to him. And I'm like, you know what? I have no control here. Like, living in fear is not helping anything, right? It's like, you don't want to admit that you've lived in fear of something. When you realize that you're like, that's dumb. That's not helpful. And I just gave it to God, and I'm like, you know what? I, he's gonna pro he's gonna protect, he's gonna provide, and I'm just gonna do what he calls me to do. And unfortunately for me, that means that I'm just stuck inside, and my poor kid is stuck inside, and we're just stuck at home all the time. 
I being high risk. So, you know, it, it's tough though in an aspect where I see my neighbors, I see my community, I see a lot of you guys, right? I don't know you guys specifically, but like a lot of our community members in the various communities are like, you know, oh, well, you know, it's not a big deal. Like I've been doing this and that and I, you know, I'm not sick and I'm good. And it's like, you see that and you're like, God, but why are you telling me to stay inside? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's hard. That's so hard. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, God, like, I trust you. I trust that you are telling me to stay put for a reason. But I'm also starting to understand it's not just because of the coronavirus. There's a lot of other factors of life, right? Um, there we go. Um, and Kari said... It sounds like the big stuff is easier because you can't control them. <laughs> you just know that you can't control the big stuff, right? Man, that's so true. That's so true. Um, I think there's also something to be said about active trust versus passive trust. That's a really good point as well. Absolutely. You know, I, I feel like there's certain things that we can be more passively trusting in, right? But there's definitely things where you have to very intentionally just, like, just purposefully trust God and like remind yourself constantly like God I just I just trust you I just trust you and you just have to it's like almost like if you say it enough then you'll start believing it right like it's kind of that mentality a little bit um and you just you just keep handing it over until it becomes more of a passive trust right and passive not passive as in like passive I don't care but passive as more of a natural kind of trust right our trust is really tested during times that we have to take action or respond with patience and trust. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. And, and again, man, you guys are coming in like right after like a prime example of that. But y'all are, you know, we have several other, you know, several fellow streamers in here. Um, Christian streamers, nonetheless, who, you know what it's like to deal with trolls in your chat. You know what I mean? And we just had a, a nice, fun little experience <laughs> with that. Um, one of the lighter, actually, of the of the experiences that I've had. Um, but, you know, that's a test, man. That's a test for you and for all that are in the channel. But that's also an opportunity to really trust God with this person or these people coming in and, and trust that God put them there for a reason. Right. And that reason is not to troll you. Right. Like that's not the intent. That's not really the reason. They may think that that's the reason. Right. But that's not the reason. When people come at you, whether it be trolls on the Internet or people in your life that come at you and and really, you know, make you even maybe want to make you make you maybe want to question your faith or you lose your patience or maybe you question God and be like, God, what the heck? Like, why would you do this? You know, um, you will be tested by different situations, but you, but take that as an opportunity to grow and, and be an example of Christ in that situation. And then you have an opportunity to also plant seeds, right? Sometimes it'll take a lot of time for plant, to plant those seeds, but be diligent, stand firm in how God calls you to live, right? Stand firm in that. Trust God no matter what you're facing. Trust God no matter who you think is watching or not watching, right? Just trust him. Just flat out. Absolutely. Okay, I digress. You guys are awesome. Thank you for your responses there. Um, all right, so we're going to hop over to verses 9 and 10. Sorry, I'm like playing with my pens. I'm going to put those down. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Oh, I stress this all the time. Okay. All the time. I love this so much. I'm highlighting. Hang on. Got to highlight this. Got a highlight. I'm a highlighter and I'm a note taker. Y'all should be too. It's wonderful. <laughs> Honor the Lord with your possessions. Oh, man, that's, 
that's hard for us to do sometimes. And with the first fruits of all your increase, okay, so there's the command, okay? Honor God with everything that you have. Everything that you have is from him. So you should be using everything that you have to glorify and honor him, right? Honor the Lord with your possessions. You did not earn those things. Heck, none of us deserve what we have. Like, let's be real honest, right? None of us deserve what we have. And I know that there's probably somebody out there who's thinking, I deserve what I got. I earned this. I worked my butt off. You know what? God lets you have that. Like, no offense. God lets you have that. And trust me, I've had to have a lot of pride checks myself. But you didn't earn it. God gave it to you as a gift, and he can take it away, right? Honor him with everything that you have. When we honor him with all that we have, what happens? Your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. In other words, he will bless you immensely. When you give back to him, when you glorify him with all that you have, he will fill you up with more, right? A Dave Ramsey thing better than I deserve. I don't know what you're talking about, but I do know who you're talking about. <laughs> Everybody always tells me, you should do the Dave Ramsey thing. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't really want to do that. <laughs> you can totally clarify what the heck you're talking about. Others may know what you're talking about, though. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, honor God with everything. All of it. It's all his. It all belongs to him right? And we should act like it. Use all of it for his good. Give back the way that he calls you to. He will call you to use the things that he has blessed you with. And you need to respond in obedience and be disciplined about how you are using the tools that he blesses you with. When you are asked how you are doing, you respond, doing better than I deserve or something to that effect. Oh, I got it. Okay better than I deserve. Man, that's a that's an honest response if I ever heard one. <laughs> Man. Okay, and then it says here, what would it mean to a uh, what would it mean for a believer to honor the Lord with the first fruits of the harvest today? Ooh. It's a good question. <gasps> oh my goodness. What would it mean for a believer to honor the Lord with the first fruits of the harvest today? What are the first fruits, guys? It reminds me of Cain and Abel. You know what I'm talking about? Reminds me of Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel were told to bring a sacrifice for the first fruits of their first fruits to the Lord, right? Um, a sacrifice worthy of God. And. Um, one sacrifice was worthy and one was not. The worthy one was the first fruits. The unworthy one was the leftovers, right? Let's break this down. Um, let's just get real basic. T let's, let's relate, let's relate to tithing, okay? So, we're called to tithe, right? A tenth of what we earn back to God, right? So what God wants is we'll just break it down real simple. So say you, you get your paycheck, right? And you get let's see if I can math today. We'll make it easy. Say you get a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, whatever. We'll just go small. Thousand dollars, okay? You get a thousand dollars. And God is saying 10% is is what we should tithe back to God. So what he wants is you to take a tenth of that and give it directly to God. What he doesn't want is for you to, oh, but, you know, okay, well, I got to I gotta pay this, and I got to buy that, and I got to do this, and I got to do that, and, oh, well, I've got, oh, well, I mean, I've, I've got, like, 10 bucks left over, right? Well, I'll just, I'll just give, I'll just give God the 10 bucks, right? Cause I, cause I got to do all of this first, 
And then, you know, whatever's left over. This is what's left over, so this is what I'll give to God. That is not what he wants. And that is not what's going to bless you. You know, she says, the essence of tithing or seeking the kingdom first, then all these things will be added to you. Because it required humility to put hope in God to provide, even if that isn't a promised result in the future. Absolutely. You know, and man, let me just tell you, tithing is tough. Okay? Tithing is tough. Um, and it is something that is not practiced often enough because we live in a very, I mean, I'm just going to be real honest, real brutally honest. We live in a very, um, prideful, greedy world. And, and so often we, we just, we lack trust that God is going to provide what we need if we give him what we owe him. Right? We lack the faith to trust him with what is already his. So we think that we have control when, and then we end up just giving him the leftovers and we try to take care of it all ourselves and, and we end up being so upside down and it ain't even funny. I've lived it, trust me. But when we give God our first fruits, we give him what he has put on our heart and called us to give to him first. And then we, we focus on, we take care of the other stuff after that. God will provide, and we need to trust that. I started tithing when I had, I did not even have enough money to pay the bills. <laughs> and I felt on my heart, you know what? This is what you're calling me to give, God. <laughs> and, and I started tithing. And from there, I went from not being able to afford the bills to having a surplus. And as I continued to give in faith, God continued to faithfully give back to me and help me and provide for me and my family, right? And even still, this, this is what I do. I don't have a daily job right now, right? And God has been blessing me and my family through this, right? So I continue to tithe. I continue to give back to God faithfully. And he continues to bless me and take care of me and provide for me, right? And it all comes down to trust. It all comes down to trust. Absolutely, Johnny. Loops back to trusting the Lord. It does. When we give him the first fruits and we say, I'm giving this to you, right? I'm giving this to you first. No matter what that means for the rest of it. I, this is what I owe you. This is, this is the first fruits here. Here is my sacrifice for you right now. Here is my, my tithe. Here is my, you know, um, <laughs> Yoshi. <laughs> I don't know. My kid might, oh, I smacked my mic. My kid might disagree with you. Or at least on the job part. I think she t usually thinks that I'm a, a, a cool mom, but I think that she'll disagree that, that I work a lot. She feels like she does more work than I do. She's totally listening to me right now. <laughs> She's probably rolling her eyes at me again. It's great. Um, but no, it absolutely has to do with trusting God. We need to trust God with what he calls us to do. And if that, I shouldn't say if, when that comes to giving back to him in any sense trust him without fail trust him without question he will show up he will provide if you need it he'll provide it if you need it he will provide it we need to be disciplined in our <laughs> in our first fruits in our in our obedience to god right absolutely uh morena see you later thanks for hanging out girl uh, the poor widow's offering in Luke is a great example of how we ought to give to God. Exactly. That story is actually, that really touched my heart um, with my situation when I started tithing. You know, that that felt like me. It's like, I don't have anything to give, but I'm going to give what you call me to give anyway. And I'm just going to trust you to show up. And I tell you what, when I started tithing, that was one of the biggest, biggest faith-growing experiences of my whole journey is when I started tithing and just trusting God that, you know what, this is yours, and I'm going to give it back to you, and I'm going to trust you to take care of me, right? It's a huge trust exercise, and it helped my faith grow 
immensely as I watched him just continue to show up and bless me and bless my family and just help me through my journey, right? Oh, absolutely. What's the difference between giving to the Lord from the first portion of your income rather than the last? Yeah, we just talked about that quite a bit. Um, you know, don't give God the leftovers. Do not give God the leftovers. Give him what he puts on your heart to give without question and without fear, right? He'll provide for what you need. The word first fruits emphasizes that we are to first give our best to God from all we produce. This is close to the subject of tithing. Many people consider tithing often only after the other needs are met. Giving the tithe requires that this amount be set apart at the first. We don't serve God with just 10% on Sunday. We can honor God with all of our money and possessions. It's a good point as well that, you know, we're called to tithe that 10%, but if he puts something else on your heart, do it, right? Absolutely do it. Like, you know, when you guys bless me, I see God out and I'm like, God, what do you want me to do with this? Right. And so like our first goal um, was for the new study Bible. Right. And and you guys have blessed me to where I can get that new study Bible and it will feed our studies even more. And we've got other things that that I've been praying over. Um, and I want it to always be honoring and glorifying to God whenever whenever I am blessed. I want to use that in return to bless to bless others and and really share that fruit and and glorify God in that always right and so always bring it to God whatever all of your money all of your possessions all of your resources all of your skills all of your talents have the discipline to bring it to God have the discipline to check in with God God what do you want me to do with this God, how can I honor you in this? How can I glorify you in this? How can I use this for your kingdom, for your glory, for your mission? How are you calling me to do this? To use this? Oh, I got a gnat. What the heck? Get out of here. Sorry. <laughs> Fly don't bother me. Um, you know, honor God with all of it and have the discipline to seek him out and seek out his will for that. You know, that's why, like, I've got, you know... I was praying about it this morning and I was like, man, you guys are amazing. And we reached the bit goal so that I, and we far exceeded our sub goals. We've got one more sub goal for one more emote. And then it's like, God, what do you want me to do? Right. And I'm bringing it to God. And before I put anything else up there, I'm like, just, just God, I, I want to hear from you. And I want you to tell me what I'm meant to do here and how can I use what I am being blessed with for your mission and for you to glorify you even better, right? Always, you know? And sometimes it'll go towards helping support my family. And sometimes it's going to be things that are going to directly be fed back into the community. So, you know, have that heart to bring it to God always. Everything, no matter what it is. Bring it all to him. And just seek out how he wants you to use it. All right, and then last little bit here that we're going to go through today, verses 11 and 12. My son, do not despise the chastening <gasps> oh my gosh, of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son in whom he delights. What are the commands given here? <gasps> don't, don't despise discipline. Or correction. Oh my goodness. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. Don't despise discipline or correction. Okay. And then what is the promised result of each of these commands? Uh, for whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son in whom he delights. So we know that when, when God disciplines us, when he corrects us, it's because he loves us. And he wants us, he wants us to learn. He wants us to grow and get better, right? The writer in this proverb challenges us to accept God's discipline with patience, knowing its purpose is for our greater good. To ask God to refrain from giving us discipline would be to ask him to love us less. Oh, man. And then here's one more. Oops. And 
and then it references Revelation 319 those whom I love I reprove and discipline so be zealous and repent why does God rebuke his children and how does the Lord's discipline relate to his blessings he rebukes us and corrects us and disciplines us because he loves us and he wants us to be fruitful he wants us to be more like him and less like the world right and how does the Lord's discipline relate to his blessings when we heed his discipline and we learn from that we grow closer to him we grow more like him right more like Christ we are corrected we're we're more in tune and in line with God and with that we are more obedient to him and through obedience we can receive his blessings right it says typically when we hear discipline we think about the relationship between a parent and a child it could mean a timeout a spanking or a stern conversation but it carries with it the idea of helping the child grow and become a better person as with any loving parent, God's discipline is often painful and never fun, but the brokenness it brings is necessary for change. Being open to his discipline is for the sake of spiritual growth and renewal shows wisdom on our part. Yep. Being open to his discipline for the sake of spiritual growth and renewal shows wisdom on our part. We should be open to his discipline so that we can grow right we can be renewed we can have the rough edges you know cleaned off and cleaned up and and smoothed down right absolutely